Welcome back to the intro series. Um, we're going to be moving on today into some more standing poses. So there's lots and lots of standing poses. We'll just keep doing these in little chunks. Today we're going to cover low lunge, crescent lunge, triangle pose, and extended side angle pose. So my uh, lovely volunteer and friend Carrie here is here to um, help me show you proper alignment techniques and variations and modifications on the posture. So she's gonna have a, a side view. I'll do a couple um, forward view uh, moments in the posture as well so you can see two angles. So we are gonna start today in low lunge. So for low lunge, you're gonna bring um, your right foot forward. We'll do right foot first. So you're gonna bring your right foot forward on your mat before you go any further, we're gonna want to find a 90 degree in our front leg. So you want your ankle stacked directly over your knee. And just hold here, Carrie, one thing I forgot to mention. If you do have blocks, blocks are, um, can really help us if we're uh, feeling any tightness in the hips or the pelvis. If you don't have blocks, you can use soup cans or just anything else at home, like a pile of books or whatever to prop you up. All right, so if it's really hard, for you to get into this position in the front knee, you can always place your hands on blocks, okay? Because we're gonna want to have a nice extended spine. All right, so you can remove the blocks here. All right, so with that front knee stacked directly over the front ankle, you're gonna start to just walk that back leg back. So we want a really nice, long, extended back leg. All right. If this is enough for you, you can keep your back knee on the floor. So this is a modification for low lunge. Um, if you want to start to get a little, build a little more heat in the leg and go into the full posture, we'll tuck these back toes under. You're gonna keep that heel nice and lifted and then you're gonna lift the back knee off the floor. All right, so just kind of starting from the back here. In our low lunge, we do want the heel directly over the toes. So be mindful that the heel's not slanting off one way or the other. We want a really tight quadriceps. So this muscle here, the knee is gonna start lifting up the back of the leg. All right, and then in low lunge, we want level hips. So if you find that that hip is creeping up, you wanna just draw that left hip up so the two hips are level. And then really important in all of our yoga postures is a nice straight spine, okay? So we want one solid line from our tailbone right here coming all the way to the crown of the head, good. So you can see it carries just minor adjustment right there. This will keep the neck nice and long. So in this position in the spine, your gaze will be slightly in front of you, maybe two to three feet in front of the toes. Good, so you really wanna stay nice and lifted. And once again, we already covered it, but we do want a 90 degree angle in this front leg, which Carrie has right here. Now, if this is too much, you're not that flexible yet, we do not want to sacrifice this angle in the knee unless the knee is, the back knee is on the floor, the support of the back knee. So you will see um, some postures cued in which the knee can creep a little bit past that front ankle. This is actually getting deeper into the hips, despite what I just said. So I just want to emphasize that the back knee on the floor, the back knee needs to be on the floor to um, take any other movements in this front knee. Okay, now again, if you're, you're not quite as flexible, you can just back off of it a little bit and then we'll start working toward knee over ankle. That's the alignment in low lunge. Very nice. Okay, so we're gonna move from low lunge right into crescent lunge. So to come into crescent lunge, we do want that back knee off the floor. And actually, let's just back up one step, place that back knee on the floor. We'll take crescent moon first. So again, this will be supported with that back knee on the floor. So perfect. So Carrie brings her spine upright, head stays in line with the spine. The positioning here is going to be shoulders right over hips. So if you find that you're leaning forward or leaning too far back, you wanna get those shoulders right over the hips. So this is a nice supported position here with the back knee on the floor. And then we extend the arms up overhead. 
All right, now again, if you have tight, aren't, tight shoulders, it might be a little more challenging, but what we're working toward is straight arms. And then the fingertips are nice and pointed up toward the ceiling, spread and active, okay? So show us your hands just hanging out here. Bleh. No, 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 no. Whoop, active, okay? We spin the pinky fingers slightly in, and this broadens us through the back. So from the front view, arms up overhead, you'll see this spin. So the pinky fingers come in, fingers active, and then sh wrists over shoulders, over hips. Beautiful. All right, go ahead and take your hands back down toward the floor. We'll come into crescent lunge now. So tuck your back toes under, lift the knee back up off the floor. Nice, strong, low lunge, head is in line with the spine, and then we extend shoulders right over hips. Good. So again, hips are level. If one hip's creeping up or forward or back, we want to get two hips in one line. You can give yourself a self-adjustment by taking your hands to your hips and just feeling your hip bones and giving yourself that adjustment. Okay, so one of the cues you're gonna hear is you want to draw the tailbone to the floor. Okay, so Carrie, show us a little bit of a sway back. Good, yeah. So when I give the cue, draw your tailbone down, watch what happens, right. Very nice. And automatically, when you draw the tailbone down, it's gonna engage your core. So we're basically just shortening the front line of the body. So we've got this tailbone drawing down, shortens, shortens us up through the core. Good. Once again, we want the 90 degrees in that front leg. If we're not feeling that flexible, it's a little bit too challenging, you can just kind of back off the lunge just a little bit, and then we're working into that 90 degree angle. Okay, extend those arms up overhead. Same thing that we just went through. We're working towards straight arms. Nice active fingers, wrists over shoulders, over hips. Head is in line with spine. So we want a nice long neck. And then what is very common when we lift those arms up is we hunch the shoulders. So we want to actively draw the shoulders away from the ears. Okay, really nice, beautiful crescent lunge and go ahead and straighten through that front leg. Okay, so from crescent lunge, we're gonna come into triangle pose. So what we're gonna do is just straighten that front leg. We're gonna spin that back heel down toward the floor. And then we're gonna make an adjustment with our stance as we go through the pose. So first things first, we wanna open the hips and actually go ahead and um, let's take your opposite. No, 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 you're good, you're good, okay. Okay, so straighten through the front leg and we want level hips again. Good, hips are open, shoulders are open. Arms are gonna extend parallel to the mat. Good, once again, if you find those shoulders hunching up, hunch your shoulders, eek. Lower the shoulders down away from the ears. Head is in line with the spine. So we have one line from the crown of the head down through the neck all the way to the tailbone. Tailbone draws down, good. Nice, nice engaged core, and then engage the arms and the triceps. So you really, really are actively reaching through the fingertips. All right, and as we come into triangle pose, trikonasana, we start to hinge forward, and we reach as far as we can, and then two arms are gonna stay parallel with one another. The right hand's gonna come toward the floor, and the left arm is gonna come up toward the sky or the ceiling. Okay, now once again, you're feeling like this is way too much, I'm not this flexible. You can take a slight bend to the front knee. We're working toward a straight leg. So go ahead and straighten out your leg again. Or you can take a block at any height, place your hand on the block. Good, really nice. All right, so common mistake, and go ahead and remove the block. Take your hand to the floor is starting to Lean forward so you can get your hand to the floor. Okay, so we don't want to collapse here. Now watch from this position. Watch what happens when we lift. Yes, beautiful. Extending one long line from the tailbone all the way to the crown of the head. It's a beautiful triangle pose. We continue to just open through this hip. And this looks like a really nice pose, but these are the things that you want to be doing with your body leg is nice and engaged. All right, and so one last thing, you can take your gaze to the floor. This helps us with our balance. You can take your gaze to the side. 
or chin toward the bicep gaze comes up. Most challenging the balance, but notice how Carrie's head didn't move, just her gaze moved, okay? So her head st stays in line with her spine and just rotates. Beautiful, so come all the way up. Start to lift, 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 lift. Good, and you can release the arms, give them a break. Good, all right, so next pose we're gonna break down is Parjava Konasana, extended side angle pose. There's a lot of um, modifications and variations in this pose. So we'll just take it nice and slow. So just where you are in your stance is perfect, just like we were coming into triangle pose. So you want a nice long stance. Now, again, we might need to adjust the stance as we come into the pose. So we'll make any adjustments that we need. Hips and shoulders, once again, are open to the side. So we're not facing forward, we're facing sideways. The knee is going to come toward the front toes. We're gonna to come back into a 90 degree angle. All right, so maybe you came into a 90 degree angle and your knee like, or you came forward and your knee jutted way past your toes. What this probably means, let's say you were here and you came forward, oh, already my knee's past my ankle. Guess what? You need to take a wider stance, okay? So you wanna, if you're really tall, you're gonna have a pretty long stance on your mat. All right, so common, uh, common mistake that happens as we come into extended side angle that can be a stressor for the joint is to start to hinge, so come back up straight, to start to hinge forward. I don't wanna hurt you, so I'm not gonna push this. And then the knee comes in, okay? So if we're really, really tight, that is a common thing that'll happen. If that happens, back off the lunge. So we want the knee coming directly toward the toes. And what that is gonna mean most often is that you're really engaging here through the glute to pull the right knee toward the right pinky toe. And obviously you don't want the knee going past the pinky toe, you want it in line, but the action is going to be a pulling open. All right, once again, same thing here. We draw the tailbone down. We want to avoid sway back. Show us a little sway back. Yeah, good. Draw the tailbone down, engage through the core. Okay, second common mistake in extended side angle and warrior two as well is that we have the shoulders um, uh, either rolling forward or back or not in line with the hips, all right? So we're gonna keep those shoulders right over the hips, extend the arms long, just like we are coming into triangle pose. So we start from a warrior two position. Here, head in line with the spine. So right directly over the tailbone, okay? And then we're gonna take the first variation in extended side angle. So we're gonna take the elbow to the knee. This is a nice supported side angle pose. And we'll just take that um, top arm straight up. The palm's gonna face out fingers are really active. And once again, head stays in line with the, the spine, but the gaze can be at the toes, the wall, or up toward the fingertips. All right, common mistake in this variation of this posture is the crunching of the shoulder. Show us, there you go, very nice. So what do you do? You lift out of the shoulder, beautiful. Really nice adjustments. Strong back leg. Notice the heel is on the floor. We're pressing into the outer edge of this back foot, so much so that you can start to feel the arch peel off the floor. Really strong ankle, really strong quad. Excellent, okay, go ahead and come all the way back up. I'll give you a little break, get out of that leg, release your arms. All right, so we're gonna come into another variation of Parjva Konasana. So go ahead and set yourself up just like we did. Extend those arms, lunge into that front knee. Make sure the front knee is tracking right toward the middle two toes. Good. Now, this time instead of setting that elbow on the knee, we're gonna bring it down toward the ankle. Okay? Arms gonna come straight up here. Now, just like in triangle pose, if you do have the flexibility and the hand can get toward the floor, we want to avoid resting onto the hand, hunching into the shoulders, rolling forward. This is what's happening when you come down back out of the pose. Watch this, come up, extend. Good, you're using your core to stay lifted. All right, so from this position, next variation, you get the really nice, the full pose, the nice side stretch. We extend that arm straight forward. 
Once again, we're gonna have a straight line from fingertips through the shoulder, back through the hips. Continue to roll the shoulder and the hip open so you feel this nice stretch here through the ribs. Gaze, floor, wall, ceiling. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go ahead and come up, give yourself a little rest. All right, I'm gonna do a tutorial on binds, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but we're gonna do a bind now. All right, so come back into extended side angle, the full variation. Fingertips to the floor. Again, I'm not spending a ton of time going through binds. That's a t tutorial un unto itself. All right, but for a bind, we take that top hand, we can take a half bind, we reach it around for the hip. You can take hold of your shirt, your pants, or bring it all the way to the inside of the knee. And then we start to reach the bottom arm underneath, flip it around, good, yes. All right, we roll the shoulder open. We do not want to take a bind again if we're hunching, crunching, rolling forward. We want a nice extended spine. Carrie's bind is beautiful, so this is really, really nice alignment in this pose. Okay, very nice. Come on out of it. Excellent. All right, really nice. Um, for your sake and Carrie's sake, we'll take it on the other side. We might not spend as much time on this side, but I, what I'm going to do is get you into the pose talk you through the alignment cues and I'm going to go ahead and do it on my mat so you can see it from the front angle. All right. So let's go ahead and bring the left leg forward. So just come down onto your mat, the left leg forward. If you need to use your hands to assist you in getting that left leg forward, great. If this is where you are today, great. We want the left knee right over the left ankle. Back toes are going to tuck under. We'll take the hands to the floor. Or if you feel like you're hunching over and this is just enough, get your blocks and lift. All right, lift that back knee off the floor and find one line from the crown of your head all the way back towards your heel. So head is in line with shoulders, in line with the spine. It's a really powerful pose, common mistake. Hunching over, bending too far forward, knee jutting out over the ankle. So find that alignment, strong, low lunge okay go ahead and take the back knee down toward the floor and again if this is where your low lunge is that's great okay we're just working the strength building aspect of the pose by lifting the knee off the floor all right from here we're going to come into crescent moon pose the knee stays on the floor the toes can stay tucked under or top of the foot flat to the floor once again if you want to stay here with blocks or your hands on the floor if they reach the floor great Otherwise, we're gonna to start to extend the arms up overhead. All right, so your points of alignment. That knee stays right over the ankle. Again, since the back knee is on the floor, you do have a little more wiggle room, okay? Just be mindful of your knee joint. Two hips in one line, so we might pull that left hip back, right hip forward. Arms extend up overhead. Fingertips in line with wrists, in line with shoulders. What do we want to avoid? Crunching up, lower the shoulders away from the ears. Spike slight spiral of the pinky fingers in. Nice, strong, straight arms. If your arms are bent and this is as far as you can go today, that's great, that's fine. We're working in this direction, just so you can see where your body is working toward. All right, take the hands back to the floor for some support. We're gonna tuck the toes under, lift the knee, come back into your strong, low lunge. Again, avoid hunching over and rounding strong, low lunge keep your legs right as they are and then extend those arms up overhead all right so common mistake swinging that tailbone back having a big arch in that low back we want to draw the tailbone down shoulders over hips wrists over shoulders active through your fingers okay knee right over that ankle Two hips level in one line. S slight spiral of the pinky fingers in. Good. All right, release your hands to your hips and just feel your hip points. Level out your hips. Draw that left hip forward, right hip back. Left hip back, right hip forward. Good, you can always take these self adjustments and release. Oh, Carrie, I made you hold these for a long time. That's really hard. <laughs> That's really challenging. All right. So we're gonna take triangle pose now. So you can see Carrie from the side in the front. You can see me, um, this other angle here. Hopefully that's helpful to you. 
All right, so you're gonna adjust your stance as you come into the posture. I suggest if you're tall, you have a pretty long stance. Your back toes are gonna come into a 45 degree angle. I don't know if I cued that on the other side. If that's too much on the ankle, you have an injury, you can bring your toes in line with your heel, okay? We are working in this direction, 45 degrees. Shoulders, hips open. We're gonna extend the arms long, bring them parallel to the earth. So everything is open, but we gaze out across our front fingertips. We're gonna start to hinge forward without moving the legs. Two arms stay in one line, left hand toward the floor, right hand toward the ceiling or the sky. All right, if we don't have a lot of flexibility, if this is too much, you can always take your hand onto your thigh, to your shin, to your block, to your ankle. Front toes in, right in front of front heel. Again, back toes pointing slightly in. What do we want to avoid? Couple things here. We want to avoid hunching and rounding to reach the floor. If you're like, okay, well I've got the floor, but your triangle looks like this, back out of it. Lift, extend, one long line from the crown of your head. Okay, you're using your core to stay lifted. All right, go ahead and back out of it. Give it a little wiggle and shake. Ooh, good. All right, so from the same position in our triangle legs, again, a long enough stance so that when you start to find the front knee bending, it's not gonna come past your ankle, okay? So Carrie and I are both really tall. Our stance should be almost but not quite the length of our mat, all right? Toes, again, angle in unless, unless it's too much on the ankle. Front toes right in front of that front heel. Arms extend parallel. We're nice and open here. We don't move in the legs. Well, we don't move in the hips, I take that back. We just start to bend that front leg. All right, so here I am. Oh, my knee's coming past my ankle. Oh, I need a wider stance. Okay, if we're not super flexible and that's a little bit too much, you have a shorter stance, just come down a little bit. Just don't let that knee pass the ankle. Okay, common mistake, sticking the butt out. Okay, from here, draw the tailbone down. Shoulders are right over the hips, soft gaze about across the front fingertips, strong back leg, okay. And then if you find when you come into it, and this just takes strength and practice, so it's not uncommon that the knee is starting to sickle in, and you can see knee from the front now. This is really, really bad for your knee. Back out of it. Okay, we wanna activate our gl glute, and then pull the left knee toward the left pinky toe. All right, so here's our variations. We can come down, elbow to knee, palm faces up, Arm extends up. This is a great place to build strength. It's a little more supported. Avoid this, find this, okay? From here, next variation, fingertips to the floor. Arm stays straight up overhead or arm extends forward. Reaching fingers through the shoulder, back through the heel, nice strong core. Okay, and then finally, Carrie's gonna stay right where she is. You're gonna see the bind from both sides. Okay, we start to wrap that right hand toward the left hip, left hand underneath, fingers reach toward one another. Don't sacrifice the bind if this is what it looks like, or don't go for the bind, sacrifice the pose if this is what it looks like. All right, so if you have the bind, the posture should look like this. We're lifted, the shoulders stay stacked, we're nice and open. So again, if you're hunching, crunching, falling forward, uh, that butt's coming out, then back off the bind. Maybe take a half bind, okay? Nice and open, open, open. Good, and release. Woo! Good. All right, so I'm just gonna give you um, 
two more variations on your arms in crescent that you might see in a class. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time um, talking about these arm variations. I just wanna show them to you, throw them out there. So let's come into our low lunge on our right leg. Strong low lunge, rise up to crescent lunge. So very slowly extend the arms up overhead. Okay, so I don't know what the Sanskrit name of this is, to be quite honest, the official name, but airplane lunge. With airplane lunge, we hinge forward 45 degrees and we sweep the arms back, okay? Common mistake in this airplane lunge is to start to hunch forward. So we want one line from crown of the head back through the heel, head in line with the spine. Can't say it enough. Okay, and then one more arm variation with this angle, 45 degree angle, arms come forward, biceps by the ears. Try not to crunch up the shoulders, really strength building pose and release. Good, and we'll just take it on the other side. This will be our last couple postures. So left leg forward for low lunge, stand up tall, crescent lunge. And we'll take airplane lunge on this side. So hinge forward 45, don't hunch over around the shoulder, sweep the arms back, squeeze those triceps, the backs of your arms should be nice and strong. Fingers are nice and active, palms point down. And then sweep the arms forward, biceps by the ears, palms face each other. The torso doesn't move, we're at 45 degrees. And release. Good, come all the way down. Come to a seat. All right. Thanks for joining me for uh, this section of the intro series. I hope you learned something about these postures. I do wanna say, depending on the style, the class and the teacher, there are sometimes some different alignment cues that you might hear in a class. I wanna emphasize that the thing that I really want you to learn in these tutorials is a lot of that spinal alignment, okay? So you, you will rarely hear anything other than long line, head in line with the spine, wherever you are in a posture. Thanks for joining me. Thank you to my volunteer and friend, Carrie, for demoing these postures and holding them. Hands to the heart. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.